Well, to discuss, we're now joined by Dr. Azar Jamin, Chief Economist at Econometrics. Great to have you with us. Thank Azar. you, Francis. Well, it's another great topic. Is, is this a dire, dismal, terrible figure? Um, it was in line with our own forecasts, and uh, we've been expecting a very poor figure now for a number of uh, months because the monthly data on manufacturing, mining, production, retail sales, uh, construction activity, electricity demand, all of those pointed to mm. a very, very weak figure. So in a sense, the actual number does not come as a, a terrible surprise. Uh, it was below consensus forecast, but as I say, um, if one had take, looked at the individual monthly numbers, it was in line. Okay, so you, you got it uh, right, but what about growth for, for the year? What does this mean? Because are, are we even going to reach that 2%? Can we catch up in, in the next in quarter? In order to get to 2% for the year as a whole, we actually have to have a 3.3% annualized growth rate in the fourth quarter, which means faster growth than at any stage this year. Unlikely. And given the signs of a decline, further decline in business confidence, uh, one suspects that that is unlikely unless for statistical reasons you see a dramatic bounce back in manufacturing production. But I, d I don't see that happening. Let, let's just put this in context because the government wants growth of, of 6% to create jobs. So we're, we're growing much slower than many African nations. Could are we heading in a direction where we become a much weaker economy, where we're no longer seen as this big giant in Africa even? We are most certainly heading into that direction. And if we carry on this way, then by the turn of the decade, Nigeria will have overtaken, that, uh, overtaken us as being the largest African economy. And more and more people are talking about it. So uh, there's no question that South Africa is losing ground. I've done some analysis to show that uh, even though we may have done reasonably well, as Goldman Sachs says, from 1994 to the present, mm. if you look at the last five years, since around 2007, 2008, South Africa has been progressively underperforming its peers. Even the advanced economies now, the likes of Europe and America, who were supposedly in dire straits, are now not growing that much less than we are. And is it um, repeated own goals? Uh, labor legislation has been heavily criticized. Uh, the, the strikes, things like that. Uh, uh, it's Education. A very, yeah, it's a very nice way of putting it, repeated own goals. I couldn't agree more with you. Education, I, I wouldn't sit necessarily put all the fault on labor legislation, but rather on the relations between the uh, employers and the workers the lack of attention to small business activity, the inability to uh, implement infrastructural investment projects, so many of which were supposed to lift us out of uh, economic growth, and more generally, a lack of trust between the private sector and the public sector, and a perception uh, being created increasingly that the private sector, the corporate sector, is the enemy mm. rather than the driver of employment creation. So I'm afraid we are going downhill. Um, we do have a plan that can get us out of this, but that plan is being opposed by a lot of the government itself, even though it is supposedly the official plan of the government. But we are seeing steps to, towards the NDP, are we not? We've seen one or two, uh, but they've been token, and we still have to see whether they will be implemented or not in the face of severe opposition from within the alliance to those steps, so, such as the employment tax incentive. So, so rhetoric right now, in your at, opinion? At the moment, it's rhetoric, uh, and uh, a hype is tried. You know, we seem to be swinging from one side to the other, on the one hand, trying to say, you know, think like the Goldman Sachs report, actually it's not that bad, we n really have made some progress, and on the other side you're having these own goals being all the mm. time. Well, you know that if you score sufficient own goals, you will lose the match, not win it. How, how far off are we uh, from our potential growth? Because there are always constraints, and we're part of this, this globalised world, so, so there's always constraints, but how far are we off what we could achieve? Unfortunately, uh, that's a good question. Be the fact is that our potential growth rate is in the process of declining all the time because we are not making any progress towards improving the education system, improving uh, the tensions within the labour market, 
trying to get small business activity going. Because of all that, our potential growth rate is falling. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were seeing potential long-term growth as reasonable to look at 4% per year. A year ago, that was reduced by the Reserve Bank to 35 I believe that we are now looking at no more than 25 if if at all. All right. Well, all bad news at the moment. Uh, hopefully we can have a better conversation next time. Thank you for joining us. Economist Dr. Azar Jamin from Econometrics.